Isaiah chapter 60, beginning with verse 1, reading through verse 6. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughter shall be carried on their nurse's arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephra and those from Seba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our hearts to you, O Lord, that we may follow where you lead us, that we may shine with the glory of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. When you join the church, or you were baptized in the church, you took a vow. And every time we baptized, baptized someone in the church or welcome them in through confirmation, we take another vow. We renew the vow that we made when we became uh, United Methodist in this church or any other church. We say we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. That's the vow that you took. I take vows very seriously. I take vows extremely seriously. The marriage vow, the vow that we made when we became members, vows that we take, I take them very seriously. And so as members of this church, we are supposed to support this church with our prayers. Bob told you how important it is at the ministry of this church to be praying for people. We meet on Wednesday at 5 o'clock in the library and we pray for each person on this list and people that we know that are in need of care. And you can do that at home. Take this with you and pray for everybody every day. That would be a good discipline for you to start in the new year. We need prayers for these, our shut-ins, and those who are ill, and those who are in the nursing home. We, they need our prayers, those who are in the hospital. They need our prayers, but we need your prayers. The staff needs your prayers. The church needs your prayers. Jamie and, and Margie need your prayers, and Dylan and Lauren and, and, and me and Gloria Need your prayer. Gloria especially, because she runs things. And so, uh, she needs your prayer. She has to put up with me every day. And I know who the boss is, by the way. We need your prayers. We need your prayers as a church. So that we can shine. We are. That's what it says, isn't it? Arise and what? Shine. Arise and shine. Your light has come. We, that is one of the things that we can do in our prayer life. We can pray and ask God to let us shine and be a beacon in the darkness. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. We agree to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers our presence. That means we're here. We talked about being what, the importance of being in church last week. And uh, I know a lot of you weren't here. Um, I could tell that because the count was low. Uh, somebody told me I ought to preach that sermon this week. 
Uh, but we talked about coming to church and, and what it means to be here and your presence. We, we need you here. We, we miss you when you're gone. We need you to be here to worship your God. And, and it's not just for us. It's not just a selfish thing for us. It, it is um, a necessary thing for us as Christians to come and share the fellowship that we have. Look, if you're having a bad time, where else to, would be better to be than the church? When you're going through hard times and it's tough and, and you're depressed and you're this time of year especially fighting depression and, and, and you can't get out because it's nasty like it is today, and, and it's, just, it's just one of those things that we, you need to come and share that with your Sunday school class or, or with somebody in church just to see faces that, that uh, care about you and love you. To share a smile and, and a laugh with somebody. We need your presence and you need to be here. Your gifts. Your gifts are, are not just money. We, yes, we, we, we need your money. No, no doubt about it. Um, the staff has bills to pay. And they won't let us not pay our bills. We have to pay our bills. But we need more than that. We need you, if you have a spiritual gift, to share that with the church. There are a lot of things that are going to go on this year with the missions committee and the evangelism committee and the congregational care committee and even our administrative committees, the trustees and the administrative board. There's going to be a lot of things that go on. And you need to be part of them. Okay? You need to be part. Yes, there are going to be people who are going out into the community and doing things. But there are others that need to be... I know not everybody can go out and do things. I know that. When, especially with missions. Uh, when, when Katrina hit, um, we finally got everything straightened out in, in Quitman when I was there. And we took a group down um, uh, to, to, to the coast a couple of times in Van Cleve. And I know some of y'all were there. But... Laurel First was a distribution center for that area. And um, I went and um, we had a lady that worked at, at a paper supply company that had just a little bit of everything. And so I called her and said, this is what we need. And anything else that you can think of that people in a time of disaster might need. And we got there with a trailer that we had. Now, I had not asked permission from anybody to do this. Uh, I just kind of showed up. And I thought, well, if I go to jail, at least it'll be go for a good cause, you know. So I, I went, and, and, and the first thing that they loaded on was two, you'll never guess. Can you guess what they were? Two first two things? Toilet paper. That was kind of in short supply. And we, we loaded that on and we loaded several other things, toothbrushes, toothpaste, all kind of things and took it to Laurel. We had the green shirts of the United Methodist Committee on, on Relief on. And we went and took those to them. People came and gave money. We, we more than made up for what we spent. And nobody complained. And we had more money. We, we almost doubled what we had done and we took another load down by the graciousness of the people of the church who wanted to be a part of that, of that uh, giving, but they didn't know how to be. They could not physically go and do things, but they could support it monetarily. Yes, there is a need for people to go out. We went out with our green shirts on, and we went and we cleaned up yards. We just would, would drive around, and we would go to Van Cleve, and we would find these yards that needed to be cleaned. And we were cleaning one lady's yard, and um, we, we finished doing that, and we looked next door, and there was an older couple, and um, they had nobody, and we said, Can, would it be all right with you if we clean up your yard? And 
Lord, you, you would have thought we'd offered them a million dollars, you know. And they said, yes, please. And so we cleaned up their yard. And as we were cleaning up the yard, uh, we were working a bunch of young people and people running chainsaws and dragging stuff to the, to the road. And as we were doing that, we had our volunteer shirts on, and um, uh, somebody came riding by in a pickup truck, and, and he kind of slowed down, and he stopped. He saw us out there working, and it was kind of, you remember, it was kind of hot after Katrina. And, and we, were, we were there working, sweating, and uh, he stopped, and he said, y'all come here, everybody come over here. And so we didn't have any idea what he wanted, and he said, look, I've got, I just got these ice chests, and I filled them up full of ice and cold water, and, and y'all come get you a drink. Y'all have been out here working. And he said, I know y'all are Methodist from United Methodist Committee on Relief, and y'all have been doing a great job. Had no idea who the guy was. Had no idea. But he, he, said, he said to a, I didn't hear him, but he went and, and um, he talked to one of our kids, and after he left, the kid said, he said... I said, what, did he, what was he talking to you about? And he said, he said that because of us, he was going to find his local United Methodist Church and be a Methodist. Hmm. Because of dragging limbs through a yard, running a chainsaw, shining for Jesus Christ, shining for the Lord, shining the love of God, shining and reflecting the love of God into the community. Simple task. A simple task. We're not asking you to go out and go in and visit homes and cold call people and ask them to join the church and, and um, uh, try to lead them in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Not everybody can do that. Now that's part of evangelism, but not everybody can do that. And we understand that. We, we understand that. But there are other things that you can do. There are things behind the scenes that can happen. Just like those people who gave money to help with Katrina because they couldn't physically do it themselves. I had a guy come into the church. This is a little extra for you, a little laying you up. Um, a guy came into the church and um, I was preparing my sermon and working on the computer and checking out websites for Sunday morning. And he came in and said, uh, I understand that your church has been doing a lot of work down on the coast. And I said, yeah. And, uh, there's, you know, I said, the Baptist church has too. They have a ministry where they feed people. And uh, all of these denominations, by the way, work together. Uh, all of them work together. The Baptists do feeding. That's what they do best. They have these food trucks that they come and prepare meals for volunteers and for um, the people who have been affected by the disaster. And this guy came in and said, I know that y'all are doing things. He said, I'd like to make a donation. And I said, well, that, that would be great. We are always looking uh, for ways that we can help, and, and that, would be, that would be really nice. And so, you know, I figured $50, $100, check for $1,000. $1,000. And we used it, every bit of it to help the people down on the coast. There are a lot of things that need to be done this year. There are a lot of things that we're going to ask God to help us do. And I've got to tell you, now this is just, just me talking, and after 30, almost 35 years of ministry, we're going to make mistakes because we're human. And we're gonna and, and and we're gonna we're gonna do things maybe the hard way, and we're gonna learn from our mistakes, and we're gonna learn from the things that we do, and when we mess up, we're going to acknowledge, yeah, we we messed that up, but not because of God, it's because of us, and we messed it up, but we're we're gonna try to do better. Pray. Use your gifts to help us. Let your light shine in the community. Let your light shine in the church. Our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our services. Well, we've talked about that with gifts. It's an honor to be able to serve God 
by you know I, I feel closer to God I think uh, than even when I'm meditating and praying when I have a shovel in my hand or a hammer in my hand. I feel close to God when I'm doing those things. And I urge you, this year, our motto is going to be shine. We're going to be asking you, are you shining? Shine your light in the community. Let us pray. Gracious Lord and Master, we come to you now and ask that you be with us and bless us. Let us shine our light into the world. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen.